hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Well, it's another Capcom classic and of course we're talking about a big, big license. Although I say that, this is one of those licenses that's kind of fallen by the wayside. It's been referenced in a number of uh, online um, TV channels. They've, you know, put the Punisher in with a bunch of other stuff. But, it has to be said, the Punisher is actually a hugely overlooked license. It's been featured in numerous other comics and other cartoons and other movies. But the few occasions where the Punisher has got to have been um, the front runner and the late lead figure. Look at that depressing story on screen, my God. Um, but on the few occasions where the Punisher has got, been given the opportunity to be the star of the show, he's always been mistreated and pretty badly portrayed in numerous versions. With no one really agreeing there's a definitive Punisher actor, let alone a definitive Punisher medium, aside obviously than the comics. Now the game itself... It was hugely popular and again one of those games that never really got any other main sequels and it was just a one-off in the arcades and I don't even know if it really got ported later on we'll find out in the trivia section but the uh, Punisher games one of the biggest things that stood out from them it was in walk along beat-em-up world they, this thing was completely unparalleled you use everything it had a fantastic color scheme it had a 16-bit arcade cabinet it had the weaponry it had um the multiple enemies a huge palette of different enemies um available to you it wasn't just the same three or four enemies over and over again the game really went to the trouble there's some really inappropriate stuff on screen by the way and the levels had their own distinctive enemies as well so there was a lot going for the punisher arcade game now in, this is a two-player walk-along beat-em-up where you get to play as the punisher himself and of course nick fury portrayed by samuel jackson in the um avengers films so uh, so the, you know i mean they've taken a bit of artistic license there with the movies but let's not you know n who knows what color anyone is let's be open-minded people um but the arcade was released in 1993 by Capcom. It was definitely one of their popular licenses at the time, but for some reason they just never went anywhere with it. It got released on other platforms a little bit, and the ones that it did get released, I think the Mega Drive one was probably the only popular one with one stab at a portable system. But that was nowhere near as good as the arcade game. In fact, they went a slightly diluted fashion than the, the arcade game itself. But I've been talking for long enough. Let's get some credits inside this. Now, of course... We're going to play as the Punisher. Listen to that sound effect. Didn't he make a bizarre noise? Straight through the window. What an entrance. Now, straight away, am I stealing money here? Slightly worrying. Okay, I thought I was a good guy. Never mind. Oh, pizza. It's all gone a bit Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I know these little tiny things I want to highlight just because I genuinely believe they're important. One of them is when you jump up. Oh, no. There we go. Hmm? Sarah? But when you jump on the spot, you can still move in midair. Something that's not really available. Oh, and here we have some weaponry. See, again, the best game I've ever played that's ever featured weaponry is still Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. There's just such a diverse selection there. Let's have a look. And we've got that surround attack as well. See, a nice selection of enemies here. Um, and again, even though I'm playing on my own here, this is a good number to go up against here. Here we go, and we've got the special in as well. Standard protocol, if you use it, it uses up a bit of health. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a baseball bat. Let's see what we can do with this. Cool. Still chasing this same fella, okay. Boom, and we're on the vehicle. Oh, who's this guy? Oh no, we got that kick in nice and early. Let's see if this bat's going to do a number on him. Oh, he got one in there. Nice. This sod with a knife though. Again, I'm, I am enjoying playing this game. There's no denying it. This is a fun game to play. 
I do feel like um, the hit detection spot on. I don't feel okay. What is it with games and axes? And also the blood. The game has blood. I know that sounds really, really silly, but the number of games I've played on this channel that walk along beat em ups released in this part of the 90s that don't feature blood. They're going to include guns, they'll include knives, but they just won't include blood. And I know that sounds really, really silly, but it seems quite bizarre. I'd love this scoring system on screen. Um, oh, here we go. Bit of narrative there. Like any arcade, I can just hold the button. Okay, that guy's done for, I think. So here we are, we're in stage two. It's got a bit of Metal Gear Solid. Hmm. Look. Okay, let's go get Bruno. Again, good selection of enemies. It's, it's mainly the hit detection I'm enjoying the most. I would, at this time, I'd put this on a par with Cadillacs and Dinosaurs based on what I've seen so far. Because that is a game that I think had some of the best hit detection of any one of these kind of games. Oh, now we've got an axe. Oh no, whoa, that was impressive. It's a little cheap, but still impressive. See how you deal with it. Oh no. Nice. I think I'll take that axe if it'll let me keep it. It probably won't. Oh my god, it let me get. To... You see, little things like that, little tiny touches that other games just don't seem to feature. The idea that I get to keep uh, the weapons as I transition between different sections of the game. I like that sort of thing. I know it doesn't seem like much, but that's a good little feature to me. I think I saw this in the opening part of the game. Massively inappropriate. Another new enemy. See, again, we're only two levels in. Lots of new enemies. Oh, no. Although, I've got to admit, I got away with something there. The hit detection on that flamethrower attack was pretty poor. I shouldn't have survived that. That said, I've flamed this guy three times now. Let's have a look. Boom, and I get to keep the weapon as well. Lovely. Well. Now, what is the game going to let me do? Because I've got a wall of bullets here. Oh. Okay, didn't, okay, first complaint, what the fuck, oh sorry, bad language, what the hell has a robot got to do with this game, plus I performed the special there and it cut through it, I'm not sure how I feel about that. losing credit here oh here we go you piece of crap we beat you down do you know what how about a little trivia because let's face it this game is nice to play and again if you've come to this video maybe you've played it before so you've already seen the game played before but maybe you're gonna learn a few facts well Straight away, the Punisher arcade game, once again, was made by Capcom. It was a Marvel license, and it was released in 1993 into the arcades. It was released also on the Sega Genesis, and a portable version made it to beta uh, for the Game Gear, but never got released. It utilizes the CPS-1 arcade system, that's the one that was used for Street Fighter Alpha and stuff like that, as well as QSound technology for that improved audio. Um, now, there is a bonus stage that perhaps will come next. I don't know what the parameters are. But apparently with the bonus stage, it is remarkably similar to that of the Street Fighter barrel stage where you jump up. There is a blog post about this game. You can see the images there. 
On top of that, there are unused levels still in the code of this, and people that have emulated this game by the engine, main engine, um, the main arcade engine, and the ROM have found two extra levels, and one of them is an extra bonus level between the last stage and another bonus level based on a plane. Once again, do visit the blog to see more, but you can use MAME to load that uh, level up directly if you get the right ROM. Now the game was released um, in the arcades in 93, but it, that was the start of a big, big partnership between Marvel and Capcom. Apparently, and I've, I've checked into the background there, this is the first big license between Marvel and Capcom joining together. After this, there are fur, further games like X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, that sort of thing. But this was the first game where they paired up these two licenses together for a main arcade series game, which is quite impressive indeed. Um, now, um, this game and the artworks in it was featured um, in the complete works of Udon Entertainment, a special release back in 2012 in their art book, their steel art book. Um, the Sega Mega Drive version unfortunately contains quite a lot of censorship. Um, as already mentioned, some of the things I really like about this game. So, a lot of the explicit violence was removed, a lot of the blood was removed, uh, Nick Fury smoking a cigar was removed, which was silly because that was all over the comics. Um, three ninjas that you saw with skimpy outfits, the females, they became fully clothed. But apart from that, the games were pretty much the same. But they obviously they had to tone down some of the definition of the game because there's no way it's going to be uh, perform as well as an arcade machine. And lastly, it's quite interesting. When I was looking for facts on this game, there was a plethora of good reviews about it. Real, you know, standout names in the review community of not just the 90s, but went on to mainstream publications even today, heavily um, promote this game and you know give it their full kudos. For example, um, the t news and t features team at IGN classified this game as brutal for its time, but still an excellent game. It was ranked 10th in their superhero game list. Um, t um, t the fifth top Marvel arcade game ever by iFanboy, uh, Josh Richardson. On top of that, Nerdist featured it among the top 10 iconic Marvel video, ga video games. It was listed as one of the top video games of all of all time by Heavies.com, Elton, jo uh, Elton, um, jo Elton Jones. Wow, that guy. Um, on top, it was also um, featured on the best beat-em-ups uh, from the 16-bit era by Kotaku. Uh, and of that is the Australian branch, uh, Jero Vass. Uh, David Hawkins of What Culture declared it number one best comic-based arcade game uh, in his 2011 list. And on top of that, John Ledford of Arcade Sushi um, opinioned um, that in terms of pure enjoyment, ingenuity, control and graphics, The Punisher is the best retro beat-em-up of all time. Again, and a number of those reviews all touch on the same thing for me. One, faithful, for the comic, faithful to the comic series, and moreover, very playable with excellent hit detection, no drop in frame rate, and excellent graphics there. So let's get back into the game, shall we? Let's see if we can get that bonus stage. I honestly don't even know how I set that bomb off earlier. So the Kingpin, Spider-Man's Kingpin. Again, 1990s um, Spider-Man cartoon, Spider-Man and the Kingpin. One of the best adaptions of the Kingpin, I would say, outside of the comics. Okay, let's have a look here, let's carry on. So again, brand new enemies as well. Fair play to them. Also, good control mechanic of the guns as well. I don't feel like I'm getting cheapened out like a lot of walk along beat em up games where they move off screen and that's declared fine. Here we go, right. Good night, Gus. Right. Angry looking sprite, go. No, I think this could be one of the best games I've played on the channel, to be honest. Oh, 
This is savage. As a boy who grew up predominantly with uh, Streets of Rage, I'm sad I missed out on this game. Teenage Rob would have loved this game. Conk. Good sounds too. Actually, yeah, I think I'll have the sword. Oh, these chicks. Oh, no. And we've worked out just in time how to do that grenade. Fabulous. Oh, and I missed out the chance of the health. Never mind. Kind of bad walking animation there. This is a bad time to get three-dimensional. So no, I think I'll get that sword. I think I prefer it. Right. Oh, did not see that coming, little karate Saxon man. I also like that you can grab people on the floor. That's something that's missing from a lot of beat em up games. The idea that when the enemy's on the floor, there's no hit detection and they can do what the hell they want. And then you stand over them, rapidly tapping punch, and then they stand up and that's it, you don't stand a chance. I think you'll be seeing this game on a joint venture between my, myself and my brother in the very near future. Let's have a look here. Oh, do we have a boss? Die in your own blood, baby. Okay, I'm gonna hope this guy featured in the comics, because I don't recognize him and it feels cheap. Oh no, didn't see that move coming. Still got one more life. Okay, that guy's face looks like a total ripoff from the Terminator. Getting there, getting there. Why not chuck another grenade their way? No, this is a nice fair balance. I think, given I've still only used one credit to get this far, I'm impressed with this game. This may not have been the money spinner people might have intended. I might have to check out after this video what the difficulty rating of this game was. But, so, do you know what? Kick to the Nagels. Okay, and the guy with no legs fell over. And do you know what? I think I'm going to wrap the video up there. But this has been the Punisher the Arcade Game from Capcom. I hope you enjoyed it. We do check out this video, um, the future, I should say, future videos for this game because most certainly going to be featured again. I definitely enjoyed this. Um, after this video is over, I am going to... Oh, wow, we have that bonus stage. What am I saying? Let's get it. Yeah, this is really similar to the Street Fighter bonus stage. This is way too similar. <laughs> like... If it wasn't owned by Capcom, it's a lawsuit. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do bung your comments down there at the bottom or any recommendations of games that you want to see on the channel. But otherwise, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio.